Welcome. This is a setup for the AQA required practical investigating stunning waves on a wire under tension. Now, let me just give you a tour of the apparatus here. I've got a low voltage alternating current power supply. I have a micrometer. I have some magnet dual magnets in a holder and I've brought those up to be level with the metal wire that I've got running from this clamp over here down to this pulley onto which I've attached um, a weight on the end of the wire. I've also got two wooden prisms which are going to allow the wire to rest and what I can do is change the length of wire that I have sitting in that field. You'll notice I've also got two crocodile clips connected to the wire so I can pass a current through it. What's going to happen therefore is that due to the magnetic field and the current which will be changing, alternating remember, we're going to get a periodic force on the wire. Now the basis of this experiment is to investigate what effect the tension in the wire will have on the length of wire required to generate the fundamental standing wave. So what I'm going to do is adjust the tension in the wire by adding weight onto this end. I'm going to apply alternating current through the wire. We're going to get a force and the frequency with which the current oscillates and hence the force changes, when that matches the fundamental frequency of the wire, we're going to get the fundamental standing wave created. And we're going to measure the length at which that happens for different tensions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a video of myself making a few measurements and then I'm going to include some photographs in the video so that you can take your own. I'll then provide a sample data set afterwards, which you can fill in, and then that will allow you to do some analysis. Okay, let's get started. The first measurement I'd like to make is using the micrometer to measure the diameter of the wire. Now, I'm going to do it a number of positions. So I'm going to do it down here first. And what I'll do is I'll make sure the micrometer is zeroed. Is. And then I'm going to remove it. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close the jaws onto the wire and I'm going to lay it down gently and I'm going to bring the video so that you can see the micrometer scale. Okay, so you can see the micrometer scale there. So what you can do is you can read off the diameter at that point, as I'm going to do now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start. So I have 100 grams of mass hanging on the wire. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the magnets so and I'm going to try my best not to move this for the duration of the experiment you'll notice I've got a ruler down by the side here what I intend to do with this ruler is to move it onto the apparatus to measure the length between them I can, I'm going to use the edge of the desk to try to ensure that these prisms are perpendicular to the edge of the table and then measure the distance between them. I'm sure there are better ways of doing this, but this is going to suffice for today. So I'm going to start with 100 grams, which I've got, and I'm going to assume, and I've checked these 100 gram masses before, that they're correct to the nearest gram. So I'm going to record in my table mass 100 grams. I'm now going to turn the power supply on. And I'm going to adjust the length of wire sitting in this magnetic field 
until I get the fundamental. Now, obviously, there's a, a range over which you get oscillation, but what I'm trying to find is the position where I get resonance maximum displacement. So that is approximately there. Now what I'm going to do is measure the length between the two prisms. Now I'm going to place that so that the 80, 20 centimetre mark is over that. And I'm going to measure the distance between them. So that will require two measurements on this ruler. One at this end, one at this end. I'm going to write both of them down, in fact. So this end is 20 centimetres. And to the nearest millimetre, 20.0. This one's reading 53.4. So the difference between them is going to give me the length of wire for that particular mass. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up in steps of 50 grams and what I'll do is for some of the values of mass I will take photographs of either end of the ruler so you can take your own measurements. Let's now look at the results. You'll see that the AC supplier was using has a frequency of 50 hertz. I've checked that with an oscilloscope and to the nearest hertz, that's correct. So take the frequency to be 50 hertz. You'll notice that there's some theory here. Theory suggests that the length of the wire is related to the frequency, the tension, and the mu is the mass per unit length of the wire by this equation. So if you follow this through, and I'm not going to do the whole thing, we can see that if we plot the length squared against m, the mass added to the end of the wire, we should get a straight line with a gradient which is given by this. Let's now look at my results. You'll notice I've left two spaces, so you can add in the results you read from the photographs I've given you for 150 and 200 grams. You notice I've been a bit sloppy in this first table. I've left off the minus 20.0. I made sure that end of the um, wire was incident on the 20.0 marking on the ruler. So these are all subtract 20 to find the length. I've actually created another table with my repeats, leaving gaps. And you'll notice the significant figures, the precision rather of each result is appropriate given the instrumentation I was using. I was using masses to the nearest gram and I was using a ruler that measured to the nearest millimetre. You can now go and use those results with the theory I mentioned before to do a bit of analysis. I hope that's useful. Thank you very much.